Welcome to this Adobe Lightroom tutorial on how to save and export files. And this tutorial is coming from Photostork.com. I'm Billy Flynn, founder of Photostork, a site that showcases historic prints and historic photos. Now we're going to jump right in to make it easy and quick for you. The first thing you have to know is that you cannot just file save images in Lightroom. It's not like Photoshop or any other image editing program where you can just file save and it writes over the image. And that's because it's what's called a non-destructive editor, which means the changes you make in Lightroom don't actually get saved over the files, the original files, which is a good thing because then you'd have to go back, then you're able to go back and make changes later. So the first thing when you're done developing, you've made your changes, you go up to file, export. And the first option we have here is to save to email, hard drive, CD, DVD. We're going to select hard drive. And then you have the option to, to save it to a specific folder. So you can choose downloads, documents, pictures, whatever. And we're going to save the pictures. And then the next option you can have is to put it in a subfolder. And Lightroom will create a subfolder when you export the files within the folder that you've selected. And the next notable option is file naming. So here we can actually rename the files that are being exported. So if we didn't want them to just be the original file name, we could rename them with our company's name, our name, and then some series of digits. But we're gonna leave that unclicked and leave the file name as it is. Now, the file settings portion of the export dialog box is probably the most important. This is where we select what kind of image format we want to use, the color space we want to use, and the file size. So first we can save it as a JPEG, Photoshop, TIFF, etc. We're going to stay with JPEG. And then here we can select the color space, which is actually how the computer interprets the colors that are in the file. So you can have standard RGB, Adobe RGB, or any other color space that you have. We're going to stick with sRGB. And this option allows you to set the quality of the JPEG. So 100 is full quality. The lower the number gets, the smaller the file will get. And the lower the resolution of the picture will get. You can also click this option to limit file size, which can be really handy if you're, say, uploading a series of photos to a website and you want to keep the photos small enough that they'll load quickly on a page. So we're going to leave that unchecked. And then there's the image sizing options. So the one that I typically use is long edge, which means no matter if your photo is landscape orientation or portrait orientation, it'll take the longest edge and resize it to the dimensions you specify. So you can do pixels, inches, centimeters, or you can do width and height and define it by one of those. And again, this won't resize your image and make it wonky. The aspect ratio will stay the same. And resolution, change here. So 72 would be what's considered fine for screen resolution. 300 is best for print. And when the image is exported, you have the option to sharpen it for screen, which is, I think, always a good thing, or for paper, matte, glossy. And the metadata options just allow you to keep the metadata that's stored within the file, like the camera, where it was shot, the date, etc. if that's in there. And the watermarking option is a really powerful tool because you're able to overlay a watermark on all the photos you export. So this is awesome because you don't have to go into Photoshop and overlay a bunch of different, or overlay each file with your watermark. You're able to do it all in one fell swoop. So if you go into the Edit Watermark option, this will come up and you can do a simple watermark. You can actually upload an image to be the watermark. We're just going to do copyright photo historic. 
And then you're able to change the opacity. You're able to set the inset. So if you want all of the watermarks to be the same distance from the edge. So we're going to save that. Create a preset. And post processing option, you can have it show and explore, open a different application, but we're going to do nothing. And then you're going to export it. And up here, you'll see it working. And it's as simple as that. And now you have your photos from Lightroom exported. And that's it. That concludes this tutorial from PhotoStork.